Welcome to Vivid History, bring you vivid and fascinating historical stories through colorized photos. Self-experimentation among medical researchers has faced less criticism compared to experiments involving other human beings. Despite a decline in recent years, there is a long-standing tradition of researchers testing their own discoveries, with nearly 470 documented instances in the past 150 years. Sadly, some of these brave scientists lost their lives while conducting experiments on themselves. Pierre Curie, inspired by Marie's work, willingly subjected his arm to 10 hours of radium exposure. To his delight, a burn-like lesion appeared, leading him to collaborate with top doctors and discover the destructive effects of radium rays on living cells and certain types of cancer. This groundbreaking research eventually led to the first reported treatment using radium in 1901. The ABO blood group system was discovered by Carl Landsteiner, an Austrian biologist, physician, and immunologist. He analyzed blood samples from members of his laboratory staff, including himself, and identified the presence of agglutinins in the blood, leading to the classification of the main blood groups and the discovery of the rhesus factor. J.B.S. Uch, inspired by his father's self-experimentation, fearlessly subjected himself to a decompression chamber, experiencing oxygen poisoning and severe side effects. He also ingested hydrochloric acid and pushed himself to the limit in exhaustive workouts, documenting his observations in a journal titled On Being One's Own Rabbit. Castle's controversial experiment involved him consuming minced raw beef every morning, regurgitating it after an hour and then feeding it to his patients with pernicious anemia. He believed that his own stomach produced an intrinsic factor that enhanced the uptake of vitamin B12, which was lacking in these patients. Despite the repulsive nature of the experiment, Castle's findings were groundbreaking. An alcoholic doctor, Dr. Olivier Amisen, battled addiction for years before discovering the potential breakthrough of the 21st century, baclofen. After trying countless treatments to no avail, Amisen took matters into his own hands and experimented with increasing dosages of the muscle relaxant until he finally found a level that eliminated his cravings for alcohol. His success led him to write a best-selling book, The End of My Addiction, detailing his journey. The birth of xylocaine, the first amino amide type local anesthetic, can be attributed to the brave actions of Swedish scientist Bengt Lundqvist, who performed the first injection anesthesia experiments on himself. This breakthrough led to the development of a substance with low toxicity, rapid onset, long-lasting effects, and the ability to be stored in bottles, revolutionizing surgical procedures in Sweden in the 1940s. An Armenian doctor named Dr. Roger Altunian discovered a unique property in a compound that had the potential to be a preventive treatment for allergic asthma. Convinced that the compound needed to be tested in human asthma, Altunian persuaded the chemist to give him some to try on himself. Dr. Barry James Marshall, a brave Australian researcher, risked his own life to prove that the bacterium Helicobacter pylori causes stomach ulcers, challenging long-held medical beliefs. In 1984, he drank a concoction of a billion H. pylori bacteria, which he described as swamp water, and 21 years later, he and his colleague, Robin Warren, were awarded the Nobel Prize for their groundbreaking discovery. In an effort to defend his theories on morphine, German pharmacist Friedrich Sir Turner conducted a public experiment on himself, injecting the drug into his veins. 
This daring act silenced his critics and solidified his discovery of the powerful pain-relieving properties of morphine. Despite his late start in studying medicine, French dermatologist Jean-Louis Marc Alibert made significant contributions to cancer research. In 1808, he fearlessly injected himself with discharge from breast cancer to investigate its contagiousness, finding that cancer cannot be transmitted from person to person. Alibert's classification system for dermatological disorders, represented as the tree of dermatoses, further solidified his legacy in the field. Max von Pettenkofer, a Bavarian chemist and hygienist, conducted intense studies and experiments on cholera. In his passionate pursuit, he went as far as deliberately infecting himself with a large dose of cholera bacteria by drinking broth, aiming to disprove Robert Koch's theory that the disease was solely caused by the bacteria Vibrio cholerae. Despite experiencing mild symptoms, Pettenkofer claimed success, although it is now believed that he did indeed have cholera, albeit a mild case, possibly due to some immunity from a previous episode. Nicolae Minovici, a Romanian forensic scientist, conducted 12 hanging experiments on himself, hoping to break a world record. However, his relentless self-experimentation took a toll on his health, and he eventually died from complications related to his vocal cords. Stubbins Firth, a medical student in Philadelphia during the 19th century, believed that yellow fever was not contagious and went to extreme lengths to prove his theory. He allowed patients with yellow fever to vomit on him, made incisions on his arms, poured vomit into his cuts, dribbled it in his eyes, inhaled the fumes, swallowed vomit pills, and even drank glasses of pure, undiluted black vomit. Despite all his efforts, he did not get sick, but unfortunately, his theory was proven wrong as yellow fever is indeed contagious, typically transmitted through mosquitoes. In a groundbreaking experiment, physician William J. Harrington underwent an exchange blood transfusion with a patient suffering from idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, ITP. Within hours, Harrington's platelet count plummeted, confirming the autoimmune nature of the blood disorder. This experiment, later repeated on other staff members, revolutionized the understanding of ITP's pathophysiology. Sin, a Swiss-born American surgeon, was known for his contributions to medicine. In 1901, he conducted an experiment to determine if cancer was contagious by inserting a cancerous lymph node under his skin, ultimately concluding that cancer is not contagious. Carrion, a Peruvian medical student, conducted an experiment on himself by inoculating the disease he was studying. Unfortunately, he fell ill and died a few weeks later, leaving behind valuable notes taken by his friends. Constantin Levaditi, a renowned Romanian microbiologist, made significant contributions to virology and immunology. He led the study of syphilis, introduced new serology techniques, and pioneered the use of antigens for diagnosis. In order to prove his opponents wrong, he fearlessly injected himself with bacteria from rabbits suffering from syphilis, but fortunately, he did not contract the disease. At the age of 60, American surgeon Evan O'Neill Kane safely removed his own appendix under local anesthetic, this self-operation was not an emergency, but rather part of Dr. O'Neill Kane's movement against the excessive use of general anesthesia, proving that local anesthesia was a viable alternative. Known as the human rocket or the fastest man on earth, 
Colonel John Paul Stapp willingly subjected himself to extreme forces in order to study the human body's tolerance to aircraft crash forces. He broke records and suffered injuries, but his experiments paved the way for advancements in crash safety and seatbelt usage. Dr. Edwin Katsky willingly injected a lethal dose of cocaine into his veins, knowing that it would result in his death. He meticulously recorded his observations as the drug took effect, describing it as a scientific experiment with death. However, by the time of his death in 1936, Dr. Kotsky's life had begun to unravel with divorce proceedings, health issues, and a family tragedy. Despite his sacrifice, his scattered and poorly documented notes did not provide much value to his fellow researchers. 